Welcome, and in this video, we're going to take a look at estimating grounds maintenance work using LMN. Many companies don't feel a real need to dial in a budget when they're estimating grounds maintenance work. So many companies just like to plug in a quick rate for a property size or by square footage, come up with a price and run with it. What's happened in our experience is that maintenance companies that have gone through the process of budgeting and coming up with the right prices and overhead recovery and then repricing the contracts they have, the average company finds that over 30% of their contracts aren't actually making any money. In fact, they're not even covering break even. Now, while that's not advisable at all, it's sometimes acceptable in some industries. You may find that maintenance is your lost leader. You get the customer in and then you maybe do the work for maintenance at a really low profit margin and pick up the prices elsewhere. Now, nobody wants to work for free. In some cases, though, you do have to work for low profit margins just to get the contract, and then maybe you pick up profit elsewhere. And that's fine if that's a strategy. However, it's critical that you know that here's where we're losing money, and here's where we're making it up. And the only way you can truly do that is to make sure that you know your costs, know your overhead, and know what you're making on each and every job you price, so that the customers you do have are overall making you a healthy net profit. Because if not, then why even be in business? So we'll start by taking a look at pricing your labor. We're going to do that assuming that you've already gone through the process of building your budget. Now, maybe you've built a company budget. Maybe you've built just a maintenance specific budget. For this video, it doesn't really matter. All I want to make sure is that you've got a budget already and you're ready to start pricing work. And we're going to start by jumping right over to the estimate setup, estimating catalog section, and just make sure our labor is priced accurately to start with. So here I've got a maintenance crew already created. And if you're creating new, you're going to go add new. Now the point isn't to walk through this entire screen. The help videos on these screens will help you do that. We're just going to go through some of the things that are critical for maintenance. Start with a crew type. In this case, I've got crew maintenance. Now some of you that do a lot of maintenance work may want to take this further and go crew maintenance two man and then make another one called crew maintenance three man, and maybe another one crew maintenance four man. The important thing to remember is that as the crews get bigger, the average wages get lower. On average, the bigger the crew, the lower the average wage gets, because you get more laborers, more low paid staff in relation to your foreman. Next here, you got overtime factor, and that's the number of hours worked per week overtime. So if your maintenance crew works an average of five overtime hours a week, then this overtime factor should be 5%. That can be explained better in this spreadsheet if you want to know the math behind that. Here's your unbuilt factor. Now this is where we want to stop for maintenance companies and figure out what this needs to be. First of all, think of your unbuilt factor like this. It's the number of hours every day that your crews are getting paid, but you're not estimating into your jobs. So you're not recovering it directly from your customers. Now this is going to change from company to company. Some companies include drive time hours when they build an estimate for the job. Some companies don't. So if you're one of the ones that don't include drive time hours when you bid a job, then your unbilled factor is going to be the percent of each day that your crews are on the payroll, but not actually getting estimated. So that would include setup time in the morning, drive time from site to site to site each day, and then clean up and unloading at the end of the day. So for some companies, that could be as low as 10% of the day, or it could be as high as 30 to 35% of the day, depending on how far your crews travel and how many little stops they have in between, and of course, how you estimate. Now, of course, if you do estimate drive time into the jobs, that'll drastically reduce your unbilled factor. If you're recovering the cost of driving to the job in the actual estimate itself, then you may only have morning setup and afternoon cleanup as part of your unbilled factor. And if you include some of that in your estimates, then it may even be lower. So companies that do include drive time and possibly setup time could be as 10%, could be as low as 5%. Now, next up is your labor burden. That's the cost of taxes and workers' comp, um, unemployment insurance, any premiums that go over and above the employee's wage. Once you've set up those four numbers, the rest should take care of itself for you. Your budget pricing here, figures out how much overhead and how much profit you need to add based on your company's budget. Your hourly rate per man hour is telling me that's what I need to charge per hour 
to recover all the costs of my labor, including wages, overtime, unbilled time, payroll taxes, etc., my company's overhead, and the profit margin I want to make. Now, just remember when you're looking at this number right now, if it's lower than you're charging today, we haven't looked at maintenance equipment yet. So if you've gone through the budget using your maintenance equipment as an equipment cost, then that's a cost we need to estimate in the jobs and it hasn't even been factored yet. If you put your maintenance equipment in overhead, then it would be because it'd be covered by overhead markup. But most companies set up their equipment in their equipment budget and therefore they need to estimate that equipment into the jobs. We'll get there in the next section. But just remember for now, don't go crazy looking at this rate wondering why it's a lot lower than you might be charging today. It doesn't yet account for any lawn maintenance equipment. If you feel like you need to override this price to get to a certain price, well, certainly you can do set fixed price. So if I know I'm going to charge $40 an hour for labor, then I can type in 40 there and it'll tell me what my profit margin is. Or if I know I got to be as low as $28 an hour to get a job, well, it's telling me that I'm losing a lot of money on that job. So you can do whatever you want to the hourly rate, or you can do whatever you want to the profit margin using these buttons here in the middle. Once you come up with the right rate, you're ready to move on to the next step, which is setting up your maintenance estimating equipment. And we'll cover that in the next video. Any if you have any questions about setting up your labor for estimating, then send us an email at support at and we'll get back to you with an answer. Or if you're looking for hands-on training, like some of our live workshops or webinars, or some of the free training events at our shop, then check out www.goelmn.com slash events.